good afternoon students welcome back to this session now uh i was going through your comments one very good query was there that sir how to find the zeros of this polynomial x square plus 4 so whomsoever square is this i appreciate a very good question was put so please go through my yesterday's lecture when I was talking about the degree of the polynomial and number of zeros, I was putting a stress upon there. But I said ki, if the degree is 2, the zeros will be 2. But at the same time, I told maximum 2, minimum sometime what happens, no, zeros are not possible. And then I shared with you how to find the zeros and how to verify the number that whether that is a zero of the polynomial or not. Now here the question is how to find a zero of this. So what I did, I said ki you need to put this x square plus 4 is equal to 0. No doubt the question is related to your 10th syllabus but query is there. So I definitely will share it with you uh, and uh, why the zeros are not possible that also I will like to make clear. So remember, whenever you are looking for the number of zeros as per the degree of the polynomial, which is the highest power, that is the degree. Already I have explained to you. And here the degree is 2, no? So maximum 2 zeros are possible. But minimum sometimes zeros are not possible. And why it is not possible? For this polynomial, zero is not possible. Why? Because when I will take this 4 to this side, this is minus 4. Now, if I will take the square root of both the sides, what happens? x square and this is minus 4. Now, you go back to your topic of this uh, rational numbers first part, what we did there. Did you notice that this is possible to solve minus under the root 4? But did you solve any question with negative sign? Did you try any question even in class 8? Of square roots where the sign was negative I assure you no because this is not a real number so this is not a real number when you are getting that third form with the negative prime numbers with the third form are the irrational numbers so prime numbers are not carrying their negative sign so here the condition is different when I will be taking the square root that will be lying somewhere with negative sign inside the square root which is not possible these are there the complex numbers and you will study in higher classes and in 10th class especially in a topic of your quadratic equation you will come across the fact ki why the zeros are not possible moreover sometimes these are called the integral zeros and when the integral zeros prove that these are not the integral zeros of this polynomial kind of these questions will be added to your knowledge but here to make it very clear as the query was ki, sir, how to find the zeros so again you need to follow the same procedure whether the zeros are possible or not, I simply making it very clear to you as per class 9th syllabus, ki if your this part is negative with the third sign you are finding any negative number, then simply you conclude your answer, the zeros are not possible. So I think that much is sufficient from your class 9th point of view, so that much instruction, otherwise in quadratic equation, there is a procedure, we need to find the discriminant. And in discriminant, there are uh, three conditions. We need to check whether that discriminant either will be equal to zero, or will be greater than zero, or will be less than zero. So when you will be getting the discriminant is less than zero, definitely when the negative number is there, that is less than zero. So zeros are not possible. And on behalf of that, we have to discuss the nature of the equation there. Because when we are putting it equal to zero, then this becomes an equation. So that is the quadratic equation in degree two. So that part we will be touching in class 10. Till then, as per your class 9, if you are finding a 0 for such a case and you are finding any number with the negative, whether that is a perfect square, please make a note of that. And if it is carrying the negative sign and lying in the third form, remember for these cases, zeros are not possible. I hope that doubt is clear now. So next part of discussion is your remainder theorem. So remainder theorem as I said is not the part of your syllabus but what is the need to discuss this theorem with you. You see uh, again that uh, you need to recall the division algorithm here. I 
will not go in detail outlines i will be sharing with you from your understanding point of view also division algorithm all of you are very clear what is that is dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder divisor into quotient plus remainder then i will come to the statement and i will give you finally what is the use of this theorem in polynomials and why this is introduced here in class 9 to you followed by the factor theorem also so dividend is the polynomial which we are going to divide will always be expressed in terms of suppose i am taking in variable x so px divisor will be your gx quotient will be qx and remainder will be rx this depends so px gx qx and rx please uh, just be clear with all these ki what is px what is gx what is qx and what is rx because in class 10 also we have to continue with this all in a uh, topic of polynomial second chapter again in class 10 is of polynomial that's why last question of that topic is definitely uh, based upon this fact only and uh, what is px what is gx what is qx and what is rx you need to make it very clear here dividend divisor quotient and remainder now what happens you know uh, here in class 9 there is a limit of using this theorem that is the remainder theorem that is what divisor that is the gx either can be x minus a or x plus a please make a note of that your divisor is either x minus a or x plus a what is the limitation here that the degree of the divisor is equal to 1 it is not less than 1 it is not more than 1 so this theorem remainder theorem is applicable only and only to those questions where my divisor is consisting of the degree 1 that can be x minus a that can be x plus a i will just clarify it with by giving you one example in support of this theorem on behalf of that i have to calculate the remainder so first of all i will come to the statement as i said ki any polynomial any polynomial of degree 1 of degree 1 or more than 1 or more than 1 when is divided when is divided by either x minus a or x plus a then the remainder will be what the remainder will be either pa or p minus a this much is your syllabus this much is your syllabus so you please be clear with this statement ki if any polynomial of degree 1 or more than 1 when is divided by x minus a or x plus a i said that is the limitation of application of this theorem is applicable only and only to those questions where the divisor will be consisting of the degree 1 if it is more than 1 we just cannot apply this theorem if that is less than 1 again we will be helpless but finally if your uh, divisor is consisting of degree 1 so then my remainder straight way i can represent either in the form of pa that is if it is x minus a then remainder will be pa or if it will be x plus a then my remainder will be p minus a i will make it very clear to you right now ki why this is pa or why this is p minus a and uh, what is the advantage then and what is the use of this discussion you see if you speaks from your previous classes point of view what happens if we have to find the remainder of uh, any division question we have to go for long division and that is the possibility here i need not to go for long division in such questions directly i can apply the remainder theorem to get the remainder how and see the advantage of this suppose i am asking you to find the remainder please 
listen to my question very carefully if any polynomial px is equal to x square plus 4x plus 3 is divided by is divided by x minus 2 say x minus 2 then find the remainder then find the remainder i hope you understand what i want to clear any polynomial px is equal to x square plus 4x plus 3 when divided by x minus 2 then find the remainder so either you have to go for long division but i said now you keep a check upon the degree of the divisor i said that is one here it is one so i can just go directly for the solution without any long division i will be writing my answer that is the part of your syllabus and that is only and only the application part we will be using as per your remainder theorem so is divisible by x minus 2 i said ki if it is divided by x minus a my remainder will be pa so i will put x minus 2 is equal to 0 and x is equal to 2 so therefore remainder the remainder will be what p a p a means that is here it is p2 so therefore remainder means p2 <coughs> what is p2 is equal to wherever x is there i have to replace that by 2 plus 3 so p2 means remainder 2 2 is 4 4 2 is 8 and 3 is there 4 plus 8 plus 12 plus 3 so your remainder will be 15 for this division so the point of discussion is you can avoid your long division when we have to apply the remainder theorem directly if it is x minus 2 i can replace that by 2 suppose if it is x plus 2 then what happens if it is x plus 2 then it will be p minus a then it will be p minus a means I have to replace here it by minus 2. If it is plus 2, it will be minus 2. And then I will go through that. So my remainder will be P minus 2. And I have to replace X by minus 2. 4 into minus 2 plus 3. In that case, 4 minus 8 plus 3. 4 plus 3, 7. 7 minus 8 minus 1. So my remainder will be minus 1. So that is the use or advantage of this remainder theorem that we can uh, avoid the long division directly by substituting these values of a or minus a we can get the remainder so that is your remainder theorem and that is the application part we need to apply uh, in our questions given in your exercises now immediately i will cover the factor theorem also what happens there because that is the additional part of this only uh, your remainder theorem one extra line we need to add any polynomial of degree one or more than one when is divided by x minus a or x plus a then the remainder means if the remainder is zero then x minus a or x plus a will be the factor of will be the factor of px that is the given polynomial now suppose from your application point of view check x minus 3 is the factor of px is equal to x cube plus 3x square plus 2. So when it is x minus 3, I know my remainder will be p3. If it is minus, that will be in plus. If it is in plus, that will be in minus. Means I have to replace x by 3. And what happens this is 27 9 3 is are again 27 plus 2 that is 54 plus 2 is 56 is not equal to 0 hence is not the factor so x minus 3 is not the factor of px
But if you ask that, check whether x minus 3 is the factor of your 3x x cube minus 3x square, x cube minus 3x square, suppose, check whether the x minus 3, limitation again is there, x minus your x plus a. So check whether x minus 3 is the factor of this px. So again, my remainder will be what? P3. So I will go for 3 cube minus 3 into 3 square. What happens here? 27 minus 27 and that is equal to 0. So hence, in this case, for this polynomial x cube minus 3x square, x minus 3 is the factor. Why this is the factor? Because remainder is equal to 0. So if your remainder becomes equal to 0, then the divisor will always always be the factor whether that is x minus a or whether that is x plus a that can be there in two forms or if the remainder is not equal to zero then you have to leave the remainder and you can say you can deny that no the given uh, divisor is not the factor of the given polynomial so that is the application part which we have to apply in our exercise problems you can start with few application of your next exercise that is how to apply the factor theorem and the remainder theorem. Moreover, few questions from the assignment point of view. I will be adding to your assignment for tomorrow. So tomorrow you will be receiving one assignment based upon the discussion whatever till date we have done on the topic of polynomials. Thank you.